Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I want to make this presentation on pancreatic carcinoma. It's a very difficult cancer. Why? Let's go. Pancreatic carcinoma, or some will call it pancreatic CA or pancreatic cancer, is a very difficult cancer to handle. It is the second one to colorectal carcinoma among all cancers that could be found in the gastrointestinal tract. So colorectal carcinoma is the commonest along gastrointestinal tract, then followed by pancreatic carcinoma. Among all cancers that have caused death worldwide, Pancreatic cancer is the fourth leading cause. The fourth leading cause of death related cancer. It is usually daughter adenocarcinoma in majority of people that will ever have pancreatic carcinoma. No placings of the pancreas can be either of the ductal cells, acinal cells, or RS cells collectively called pancreatoblastoma. This pancreatoblastoma is very common among younger age group, as young as ages one to eight years old, but it could be found in adults also. The risk factors for pancreatic carcinoma could be race, and this is very common among blacks, could be as a result of chronic pancreatitis, increased alcoholism, increased fat or obesity, particularly triglycerides, smoking, be as a result of smoking, increased age, the older you are, the more the likelihood, diabetes mellitus, which is part of your history, post-cholecystectomy and post-gastrectomy, past surgery, cholecystectomy, gastrectomy. What are the clinical features? Pain. Sometimes it could be painless, but pain is very common. And if it is epigastric pain, it's likely you are dealing with the tear of the pancreas. So, cancer of the tail of the pancreas will present with epigastric pain. And if the pain is radiating to the back, it's likely you're dealing with the head of the pancreas. You now, pain from the head of the pancreas will probably present you know, in a form that radiates to the back. Both will present with epigastric, but the one that will relate to the back is the head of the pancreas. There will be jaundice because of obstruction of flow of bile, you know, ampulla of veta, you know, common bile dots, and so on and so forth. There will be weight loss, that is characteristic of all cancers, statoria, because the pancreatic enzymes and no longer you know, getting into the ampulla of vita, getting to duodenum and performing the functions, you know, uh, digestion of fats and uh, all others. So the stool will be frothing and fast smelling. Nausea, vomiting, and of course, ascites. Along the clinical features, in addition to what we just talked about, is evalomegaly. That's what we call COVID sign. That is, the common bile drought is obstructed, but there's no tenderness. It is palpable and distended at the right coastal margin. The head of the pancreas uh, will cause the cancer, if there's pancreatic carcinoma, 70% of the time is caused by the head of the pancreas. 
and the pain will radiate to the bile like a valley outside. And you should respect journeys and may be painless. People will have itching, pruritus. Um, if the tear of the pancreas is the one with the cancer, there's likely, likelihood of sudden onset of diabetes mellitus. There are different types of pancreatic carcinoma. Dr. Adenocarcinoma is the main issue, and that is about 90% of all pancreatic carcinoma. As soon as cell carcinoma is possible, pancreatoblastoma, I've just mentioned it, serous cyst adenocarcinoma, solid pseudopapillary neoplasm, and intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm. So these are the different types that could be identified on histology when fine needle aspiration cytology is done. But Dr. Adenocarcinoma is the commonest of all of them. But pancreatoblastoma is very common among the younger age group, ages one to eight. How do you make the diagnosis? First thing, you start from the less invasive and you move on. Ultrasound, abdominal ultrasound. You look at the pancreas, you look at the biliary system. You can do CT scan of the abdomen, multi detector or computer tomography is applicable here. And when anything is discovered or is not suspiciously picked up, you can go ahead with fine needle aspiration cytology. Endoscopy, retrograde cholangiopancratography, or magnetic resonance cholangiopancratography, if you cannot see any mass. CN99 and IgG4 could be acid. We use CN99 to monitor the treatment, and I'll talk more about that. Endoscopic ultrasound and staging laparoscopy could be the gold standard here, because you'll be able to see, you know, we make a line. Okay, I've just talked about carbidated antigen CA199. It is not specific alone to pancreas, but it could be found in pancreatic exocrine and neuroendocrine cancers. It could be found in biliary tree carcinoma, ampullary cancer, and the ampulla of Veta, cholangiocarcinoma of the gallbladder and hepatocellular carcinoma of the liver. It's not limited to the biliary system and the pancreatic exocrine gland. It could also be found in lungs, breast, uterine, cholelitis, cholangitis, colorectal carcinoma, gastric carcinoma, and ovarian carcinoma. But very useful in monitoring your treatment. Possibility of vascular invasion. Here, um, you grate the circumference of the vessel that the cancer is covering. Okay? If uh, it is grade zero, which means it's not, not surrounding that vessel in any way then there will be no vascular invasion, okay? But in grade one, less than 25% of circumference of the vessel is covered, then no vascular invasion at the level of just a quarter of the circumference, okay? But when it's now getting to about 50% of the circumference of the vessel, 
then inversion is about 60% of all those ones in that group. But when it's about 50 to 75, you know, covering the circumference of the vessel, then it is possible that we vascular invasion in about 85 to 90 percent of the vessels. So, but when it is greater than 75 percent of the circumference of the vessel, then in invasion is complete, it's total. For treatment, the first thing to do is you've done your diagnostic procedures, but you look back at what the CT is telling you. The city of the abdomen, the city of the chest, the chest of the pelvis. Why bother yourself about chest and pelvis? After all, the pancreas is in the abdomen. Yes, you want to rule out metastasis for possibility of staging accurately. Okay. If it is non-metastatic, great. But the question is, is it resectable? 20% of four pancreatic CA is resectable. And the procedure here is pancreatic duodenectomy, otherwise known as Whipple procedure. You give your chemotherapy for Fulinos. Fulinos is a combination of Chlorouracy, recovery, irinotecan, and ozaplatin. So you give this after the procedure. I'll talk more about Whipple procedure in a bit. The Whipple procedure is essentially about addition of the pancreatic head, the gallbladder. The common by dot and part of the duodenum all will be removed. If the cancer is of the body and that of the tail, what to do is distal pancreatomy and splenectomy. And then you excise all the affected lymph nodes, lymphadectomy. If it is non resectable, then we do palliative, just help the patient to live and enjoy the rest of their lifetime. You give analgesics, stenting to relieve obstruction via gastrotomy or cholidocal enterotomy. We can give your radiotherapy and, of course, chemotherapy. Provlinos, Gemcitabin, and Paclitacel. The prognosis of pancreatic carcinoma is such that if it is non resectable, the individual will just live for months to a maximum of one year. But if it is resectable post resection, 20% will live up to five years. And all cancer of the pancreas, the maximum year is that about 1% of them will live for five years. So it's a very bad cancer. Um, all we need to do is to give support to everyone diagnosed with it. And I'm wishing them well as they continue the journey of the management. Thank you.